let's now look at how we can understand complex numbers in their polar form, right? Certainly we could take, if you'll remember, here's kind of a recall or a recollection. If we have a point in the xy plane, xy, we can always view this point, well, either in the standard Euclidean coordinates or rectangular coordinates, right? Where it's saying we're like x units in the x direction and y units in the y direction here, right? Or we can understand this point as being some distance r away from the origin and at some angle theta above the positive x axis. And we could also think about this point as r theta, right? And so we could always understand uh, polar coordinates in the xy plane here, right? We remember x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. This is how we understood uh, polar coordinates. We can do the same thing with complex numbers here, but the setup is a little, it's slightly different. So let's start with, let's say we're in the complex plane. So here's the complex plane. And we have a point A plus B I. What this means is that we are A units in the real direction and then B units in the imaginary direction, right? Where this is the real part of Z, or sometimes you'll just see the real axis and the imaginary axis, right? Well, now, if we want to understand the polar form here, we would ask ourselves, what is this radius? Well, by the Pythagorean theorem, this radius r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, meaning r is root a squared plus b squared. So what you may notice right away is that the radius is the modulus of this complex number. If this a plus b i, if this is our point z, well then the radius or its distance from the origin is exactly the modulus of this uh, <clears throat> of this imaginary or this complex number. Now, we also have an angle to think about here. We also have this angle theta. But in the complex plane, this is not called an angle anymore. This is called an argument. So here's a definition. Theta is the argument of Z. And the argument of Z is basically the angle that the line of length modulus Z makes with the real axis, okay? And so there's a lot of kind of, you would have to take complex analysis to get into the argument of the argument, right? But, um, but for now, we'll just use the, the depth, like the language of complex analysis, and that is to say that theta is the argument here. If theta is, uh, if it lives in the interval open negative pi to pi here, then we say theta is the principal argument. Okay, and so really we'll just be looking at principal arguments here. Um, basically what we're doing is we're taking any theta value from zero to pi or zero to negative pi, but we're not including negative pi, right? These would be our principal arguments here. Okay, <clears throat> so what do we know about the arguments in this context? Well, we have a few relations. We know that cosine of theta is, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, is going to be A over R. And we also know that sine theta is B over R, which is opposite over hypotenuse, right? Well, this tells us then that A is equal to 
um, r cosine theta and b is equal to r sine theta, which may look familiar from polar coordinates, right? But now what are we trying to do? We want to write this point a plus bi in a polar form here. So here's the polar form. We have a plus bi is really r cosine theta plus i r sine theta, right? Which is r cosine theta plus i sine theta. And there is a very important theorem. It's called Euler's. Uh, this result is due to Euler. It's named after Euler. And it's that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this is Euler's formula. Okay, And what that means is we can write this as r e to the i theta. And so this is exactly the polar form of a complex number. So let's give a formal definition. If z equals a plus b i is a complex number, the polar form of z is z equals r e to the i theta, where r is equal to the modulus of z, which is root a squared plus b squared, and theta is the argument of z, right? So this is how you find the polar form of a point. And really, coming back to this picture here, this means we can also write this point, which is given by a plus bi. This is also expressed as r e to the i theta. Okay, and so any complex number can be uh, described in this form r e to the i theta. Okay, and so let's look at a few examples. One where we convert from standard form to polar form and one where we convert from polar form back to standard, right? Let's write or let's find the polar form of z equals 2 plus 2i, OK? So if you would like a picture, that's 2, 2, this is 2 plus 2i, OK? Now, what do we have? We have that the polar form is r e to the i theta, which we know is the modulus of z e to the i theta. So what's the modulus of z? Well, that's square root a squared plus b squared, so 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is root 8, which is 2 root 2. Awesome. So that means this distance here is 2 root 2. So we have that z is equal to 2 root 2 e to the i theta. And now we need to find theta, right? What is this theta here? Well, we can do this a couple ways. Um, we know the relationship that cosine theta equals a over r, or that sine theta equals b over r, right? Pick your favorite. I'll just go with the cosine one here. So we, we have that cosine of theta. Well, in this case, a is 2, right? a and b are both 2. This is a, this is b. So we have 2 over, and what's r? Well, r is the modulus, so 2 root 2, which means cosine of theta is 1 over root 2, which also means that cosine of theta is root 2 over two, and if you know your unit circle, you know this implies that theta, the principal argument is pi over four, right? And so that means our, the polar form of the complex number two plus two i is two root two e to the i pi over four, and this would be z, right? This is the same point as two, plus 2i. So it turns out this angle, this principal argument was pi over 4.
Okay, so this is how we find the polar form of a complex number given in standard form. How do we find the standard form of a complex number given in polar form? So let's find the standard form of z equals 2e to the 2 pi over 3i, right? Well, what do we know? Remember, we know that we know Euler's formula, which says e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So that means this is two times, and then we use Euler's identity or Euler's formula here, right? This is cosine of theta, which is two pi over three plus i sine. 2 pi over 3, right, by Euler's identity here. And so that means this is 2 times, and we go to the unit circle, uh, cosine of 2 pi over 3, that's negative 1 half, right? And then plus i times sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. When we distribute the 2, that implies that z is negative 1 plus root 3i. And this is the point in the standard form is negative 1 plus root 3i, where we're looking at the point z equals 2e to the 2 thirds pi i, right? And so now here's what the polar form of a complex number is, how it's constructed, what it looks like. And I've given, given an example of how to go between them interchangeably, right? How to start with the standard form, end up with something in polar form, vice versa. How do we start with something in polar form, end up with something in standard form? Okay, so I think this concludes everything that I wanted to talk about for complex numbers. Where we'll go from here is now uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, we'll start the um, we'll start the chapter seven of the textbook on spectral theory, which kicks off by learning what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are and how to find them.